Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllieTutors.com and welcome to this video on giant covalent structures. So in this video we're going to look at three examples of giant covalent structures. We're going to look at diamond, graphite and silicon dioxide. And in all of them we're going to look at the uh, basic properties of them as well and explain them as well to make sure you can grab all the marks in your uh, A-level uh, chemistry exam. So, like I say, this is going to be giant covalent structures. Um, I have got another video that looks into simple molecular uh, structures, so where you don't have a giant structure, basically. A uh, lot smaller molecules, so if you're looking for that video, then just click on the link below, and you can have a look at that one there. So, we've got three different types. Uh, we've got diamond, graphite, and silicon dioxide that we need to know. Uh, we're going to look at these first two here, because actually you'll notice that they all contain carbon. Um, and we describe these as um, allotropes of each other. So I'm going to write that down on there. So we'll put this in red. These two are allotropes. And allotropes are basically where we have the same element, in this case carbon, but they're arranged differently. So the structure of them is different. And the structure gives you very different properties, as you're going to see in a minute. It's not all just about the bonding uh, or the type of bond that's between atoms, it's also how they're arranged, and that plays a massive part uh, of the properties. So, let's have a look at diamond first. So, we're going to look at the strength of diamonds. So, no surprise, diamonds you'll probably find are very strong things. So, they're really, really uh, high strength. So, we'll put high strength on there. They're actually the uh, strongest mineral known to man. They're really, really strong, very expensive, very shiny, used in jewellery. And because of this strength, actually they can grind it up into a powder uh, and they can use it uh, They can use it in drill bits as well. So they put uh, diamond dust on the edge of these uh, and that helps so when you're cutting through, uh, whether it's masonry or wood, it basically protects the metal underneath and stops it from being uh, from getting blunt too quickly. So diamond is a, there's a proper use of, of actual diamond, but also as you say, it's used in um, jewelry as well because it's really shiny um, and it's cut nice, but it's quite rare. So that's why it's very expensive as well. Uh, melting points. So melting points of diamonds are very, very high, um, incredibly high melting points. So we'll put that on there. So we'll put MP is very high. Um, the reason why is because we have lots of strong covalent bonds that require a large amount of energy to break them or to overcome the, the strong bond. This is the type of terminology they need to use in your exam. This idea that you have lots of strong covalent bonds uh, and you need a large amount of energy to overcome these strong bonds. So because you have lots of them, every carbon in diamond is bonded four times so um, this makes it really, really strong, and it has a very high melting point as a result. Conductivity of electricity is the next one. A uh, diamond doesn't conduct electricity. There's no free electrons in this structure here. All the electrons are involved in bonding, so therefore it is an insulator. So we'll put that there. All right, okay. Uh, solubility. Um, these things don't dissolve, no surprise. Uh, I think you'd be a bit... Uh, cheesed off, if you had a nice diamond ring, you were doing the dishes, uh, you put the ring into the water with the diamond on it, and it dissolved in the water. Um, so these things are incredibly insoluble, and there's no polarity in here, so um, for something to dissolve, you need to have some kind of polarity in the molecule. Um, this this is, a, it's all the same carbon, so insoluble. So we're going to put that on there as well. Okay. Okay, there you go. Right, so that's diamond. Um, looking at the other allotrope um, of carbon, the carbon allotrope, which is graphite. Uh, now, graphite is slightly different. The structure is layered. Um, you have uh, weak forces between a, a set of hexagons, which uh, form in layers, like I say. Now, graphite is uh, used in pencils. Uh, the layers are quite weak, so they'll slide off quite easy, and that's how you can leave a mark on the paper. So that actual mark that's left on the paper because of the pencil is uh, layers of graphite. Um, the strength of these things are quite low as a result. Um, you can, like I say, you can slide the layers off pretty easily. Uh, you can snap it relatively easily as well in your hand. So it's it's not it's not particularly strong. So we're going to put low strength there. Okay. Uh, melting points, uh, just like diamond, they have high melting points. Not as high as diamond, but still uh, fairly high. You have still have a lot of uh, covalent bonds there. 
Um, so that's what we need to put there. So we're going to put melting point is high. Okay. Uh, conductivity of electricity, um, they do conduct electricity. Uh, in between these layers here, uh, we have free electrons or delocalized electrons. Uh, and this delocalized electrons allows electricity to be um, allows electricity to be conducted. So uh, even though graphite is a non-metal because it's made of carbon, it does conduct electricity. Um, and this is quite useful because actually um, it allows us to um, use a lightweight material, which is carbon, uh, for um, electrical purposes. So for example, you can use it for uh, electrolysis of substances. So it's pretty useful for that reason. So um, yeah, so we'll put on there, it's a good conductor. Also, if you take one layer uh, off the top of there, you form something called graphene. Uh, and graphene is a really thin uh, layer of uh, carbon that can be used and is starting to be used in the electronics industry to develop even thinner devices. Uh, and, and they're pretty useful um, because they are lightweight and you can fold these devices up. Uh, you can pack uh, more power into them as well. You have lower resistance and like a traditional copper or silicon based component. So these are really, really good as an electrical conductor as well. Uh, solubility, these things are insoluble. If you've ever tried to put a pencil in water, it doesn't dissolve. So uh, graphite is insoluble. Again, we don't have any polarity here. So, so we'll put insoluble. Okay, so another key point to note as well is every carbon in here is only bonded three times and the extra electron that's left behind on the carbon atom in the outer shell uh, is actually being donated uh, into the um, delocalized system uh, in the middle here. So that allows the layers to slide. Uh, there is another allotrope of carbon as well, which is Buckminster fullerene or buckyballs as they're also known. These are C60, um, so they've got 60 carbons in a spherical football shape. Uh, superconductors as well could be used in medicine. Um, to help um, release drugs in a certain, very certain specific way. Uh, are also used again in electronics um, for that reason as well. So there was another allotrope for that. Okay, moving on to the last one, is silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide is also known as sand or quartz. Um, it's made of silicon and oxygen atoms, similar structure to diamonds, therefore it looks similar to a diamond, but obviously nowhere near as expensive. Um, so the strength of them is actually very high, just like a diamond. Again, for the same reasons, lots of strong covalent bonds that require a lot of energy to uh, break them. So they've got a uh, high strength. Uh, same with the melting point, same reason as well, exactly the same reason. So these have a high melting point, so we've got MP is high. There you go. Uh, electrical conductivity. Um, these things, as you might guess, don't conduct electricity. Uh, they don't have any free ions or free electrons, so therefore they won't conduct. So um, they are effectively an insulator. Okay, and the last one is solubility. Um, silicon dioxide is insoluble. Uh, there's, um, it's really difficult to break this structure down to allow it to dissolve. Uh, the bonds are so strong, um, it's very difficult, like I say, for this thing to dissolve in uh, standard water. So this is insoluble. Again, you could probably go to the beach and you'll see the sand there. And obviously the, the seawater doesn't dissolve the sand into the water. Uh, you know, it still remains there. So that's an obvious one really that it's insoluble. But um, there we go. There's our three different types of giant covalent structures. Make sure you can comment on the actual uh, properties of them. And you've got to explain them as well with the correct terminology that I've used in this video. Well, that's it. Bye bye.